Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's topic is Soulstorm, The Abe's Exodus, Retelling, Oddworld, Soulstorm. Before we get into it, like, dislike, comment for the engagement, subscribe if you aren't subscribed, and if you are subscribed, make sure you are still subscribed, make sure you've not been unsubscribed by the YouTube glitch. Anyway, let's get on with it. Unfortunately, and I say this genuinely, I'm not being sarcastic, I'm genuinely sad that Soulstorm is as underwhelming and disappointing. I want to support Oddworld Inhabitants. I want to support Lorne Lanning, Luscious Lorne Lanning, whatever. I do. I remember having the, like a PS1 and having the demo. Demo 1 on the PS1 and Abe's Odyssey was in it and I thought it was brilliant. So, you know got Abe's Odyssey bought for me, and then a year later, Abe's Exodus, when that came out. So these games were kind of like the pinnacle of my childhood. I've liked these games longer than I've had close friendships with people. You know, two decades? Over two decades, I've enjoyed these games. So I was quite excited when Abe's Odyssey got a remake, new and tasty. Played that for some things missing but I couldn't really put my finger on what at the time I couldn't really figure it out and then I was looking forward to Soulstorm coming out seven years in the making Lorne Lanning's original vision as he always goes on about it the original vision the original vision Abe's Exodus wasn't the original vision for the quintology that he had in mind because they had to make Exodus what well, within nine months or whatever it was made as a like to sell at Christmas sort of thing. So, you know, the and I thought Abe's Exodus was the best one in the series, to be honest. It took all the good stuff of Oddworld, updated it a bit. You could possess Paramites and Scrabs. The story was fine. There was more development of characters in it. It was enjoyable. But Soulstorm, for me, just really missed the mark. And I think if you've not played the Abe games before, maybe you could enjoy it. But... Well, no, even saying that, the amount of bugs and glitches. So it's a free game on the PS Now with the PS5. Otherwise, I think the game itself is 50 quid. And on a technical, on the technical side of things, the amount of bugs and glitches, sometimes, you know, because AP can... I don't mind that AP can double jump now. Fine, okay, good for him. I don't mind that he can climb and use monkey bars. I, yeah, good, update it. But <laughs> sometimes when you're on the monkey bars, and then you jump... Like, you'll go straight through the others. It's infuriating. They worked in this game, maybe not for the entirety of seven years, because a lot of, like, that would be kind of storyboarding and working out what you want to do, rather than the actual game development. I don't think someone sat down solidly and worked purely on, like, the mechanics side of it for seven years. I might be wrong there. I might be talking out my ass. I'm not sure. But they've been working on it for a few years, at least. So to release it with so many bugs, and yes, they are releasing new patches, but imagine... You pay 50 quid for this game, and that's what you get. Also, I'm not going to sit here and pretend that I know things about engines that software developers use to make games, but the physics of Soulstorm, <laughs> what a sentence. Abe kind of feels a little bit like a ragdoll when you're playing with him, and there's so much room for error you know, so Odyssey and Exodus, they were on like a grid-based system. There's only so many steps that you could take during one, not scene, but screen, one screen. Now, obviously, they can't come out of a grid-based system. In 2021, it would look so out, it wouldn't look, it would play so outdated. It wouldn't be good. So they've had to update it, right? But what we've got instead, as as I say, the whole like, thing with the, the monkey bars, with the first two, because of the grid-based system, you know that if you perform an action 10 times, it's going to be the same thing 10 times unless it's an error on your side, unless you accidentally jump too early or whatever. But if you make the same 10 actions each time, you're going to get the same result. With this one, you can make the same action 10, 20 times, and you'll get a different result each time. Which, okay, yes, fine, but I think this game is unnecessarily hard. I don't know what... They were thinking. I fully completed the first two, 100%. Saved all the Maduckins. Easy. People that complain, oh, well, the original ones are harder. No, they're not. I think Soulstorm is so unnecessarily hard. And there are a few people, because I was checking the Oddworld subreddit, 
to see if other people have these same gripes and you know people do some people not all but people were saying oh the first few levels to play through feel a bit janky which still whichever way you look at it that's a good few hours out of your life to play something that's janky but it gets better after the fifth or so level i was over halfway through and then i decided i'd had enough i think maybe four or so levels in i decided i'm not going to bother trying to save as many maduckins as i can because it's ridiculously hard to do so. Sometimes there are scenes where 300 Madokans were climbing up something in the background and you've got to be so obs uh, so exact with stopping the slicks from shooting them because if a slick shoots once, that's it. One's dead and you can't get a perfect score. So then I decided, fine, I'll just do a kill them all playthrough because don't look at me like that. We've all done it. But even then, and look, I play a lot of games. I do consider myself quite good at playing games. I just found it was... Not so difficult that I wouldn't be able to complete it. I gave up because I realised I wasn't enjoying it. I didn't find it rewarding. I didn't find it rewarding finding any of the secret areas. I didn't really care about that. Whereas, you know, in the first two, I don't know, there's something that hits the old dopamine sector when you find a secret area. These, it was just kind of... I don't know. Something is missing. Some sort of soul, ironically, is missing from this game. So in the end, what I decided to do is I stopped playing and I watched the cut scenes on YouTube just so I knew where I was at, where the game was headed, where Lorne Lanning's original vision was headed. And I have several thoughts. So actually, let me start with the crafting. I don't mind that there is crafting in the game. I think it makes sense. Abe is a scavenger he's got nothing he's gonna try and use like whatever he has to his advantage to save the Maduckins from the Gluckins by the way if you've never played these games nothing I say is gonna make sense but oh well you clicked on this video didn't you so whilst I didn't mind the crafting mechanic itself there was way too much of it like how many lockers and bins are there to loot through per level 40 50 there's a lot you'll get like 10 or so lockers in a row and if you have a bunch of Madokans behind you and you get them to go inside the locker to hide from like a slick uh, it'll automatically loot it for you so that's fine but there's a lot of times where you don't have Madokans with you and then you just have to loot like six lockers or bins in a row and boy that gets boring fast secondly no quick save function hotly contested right because some people the, the first aid obviously didn't have a quick save function it had a checkpoint function there are some people who prefer playing with quick save there are some people who don't i think why not have quick save in the game but then the option at the beginning to forego it if you would prefer to have you know the original checkpoint you can if you want the more updated quick save function why not i mean like in fallout you can save anywhere and also with the checkpoints <laughs> if you hit a checkpoint and then something has gone wrong in the game that's not your fault and maybe like a slig is there and you die you get stuck in an infinite death loop there's enough videos on youtube to show what i mean by that but again boy that gets tiring and the madapans don't stop talking this is definitely a personal preference because i i don't really like repetition but if you're going to have the Maduckins, you know, be able to say more than the functionary, hello, hello, like, okay, whatever. Maybe record more than a few lines of voice acting, because the amount of times I heard the Maduckins complain about, oh, stop, why are we stopping? Or, oh, I'm hungry, I want a sandwich. They're, yeah, funny and quirky, the first 100 times. And as for repetition, the levels... Why I wasn't enjoying them, I think, is the levels all felt so repetitive. I mean, they were different per level, but the screens themselves, or the sections themselves, felt so repetitive. Maybe it was because you had to loot loads of lockers in a row. I don't know. To me, it just felt really samey, apart from when you go on to another level and then it's more of the same until you go on to another level. The graphics are really nice. Visually, very nice game. But that... Okay, guys, I don't think we can be giving a game high scores just because it looks pretty. The originals have PS1 graphics, but to me, they are way more enjoyable and rewarding than this, which is very visually pretty, but okay. There's no paramites and scrabs either. 
can't even possess Glockens. All you can possess is Sligs and Flying Squid Sligs, so that gets a bit uh, boring. And I think Lawn Learning said on Discord or something that, you know, the new monsters in Soulstorm will make Paramites look like puppies. But what you get is just some jumping, bouncing things in the dark that if you shine a light on them, they, they run away. Ooh, scary. Remember how terrifying when you're about like six years old and you're playing this game for the first time? Remember how terrifying it was to have a scrab running full power at you and the music starts going? Do you remember that? Yeah, I don't care about swiggy things. And music. Where was the music in this game? It's a nice touch having the radios talk about stuff, <laughs> news bulletins, whatever. But there's no discernible music. Of course, there is music in the game, but firstly, it's really quiet. I know you can change that, but why would you? It's not... <laughs> there's something about the first one, well, and even the second, but the first one, when something was running after you and then that, you know, that drum comes in, that was some good fucking shit, dude. That was some good shit. I don't know. Where's the good music? Luscious Lawn Lanning, where is it? Now let's move on to the actual story part of the game, the issues that I had with the story. Oh yes, we're not done with this review just yet. I still have ways to go. It starts off directly after the first one, Abe, you know, freeing 300 of his pals from Rupture Farms. And during the loading screens and some of the intro, they show newspapers around Mudos. Mudos, Mudos saying things like crazy conspiracy theory about Madokan uprising. Basically, the inhabitants of Mudos seem to think that the workers are all happy because, you know, it says, like, it paints out Mullock, the CEO of Rupture Farms, to be the bad guy, saying that, you know, he killed 300 of his employees in a insurance fraud fire, which... To me, it's quite a bit of retconning, considering that the Gluckens and Rupture Farms in the first one thought it'd be a good idea to literally kill their own slaves and turn them into meat popsicles to sell to the inhabitants of Mudos. That is a little bit of retconning, to now have it as though these papers are pretending they give a shit about the slaves in all these factories. And I, did, I think I did see someone say, it's not retconning, it's you know, the papers are trying to look good and the Gluckens are trying to look good. When the inhabitants of Mudos seem to be like other Gluckens and Sligs and Madokans and, you know, some other races that we've not seen in the specifically Abe's Vikers, specifically Abe's part. But if the inhabitants of Mudos are already aware of what's going on with the slaves in the factories, or they just don't give a shit because, you know, capitalism gone mad, like errant capitalism, then who are the papers looking good for? For themselves? Pointless. I just think it's a little bit of, little bit of retconning there. So in the game, they hijack a train to put all their buddies on and Abe has to go to Necrum to find the Keeper. In Necrum, you can see that they're digging up something, but unless you press up on the D-pad and you hear, whilst in Necrum, Abe say, oh my God, they're digging up our bones. Unless you do that, because I didn't know to do that, you would have no fucking clue what they're digging up unless you played the games before. You'd just think, oh, there's a big operation going on here where they're doing all this digging, don't know what for. It's not specified unless you push up on the D-pad when Abe is by himself. So kind of why would you if he's by himself and there's no Madokans to, you know, because that's the button to rescue the Madokans, right? But it's never mentioned in the actual story itself. So that seems like a bit of an oversight because, you know, it was the first kind of part of Abe's exodus going through... Necrom mines, saving all the Madokans, saving the blind Madokans. There's no blind Madokans or emotional Madokans in this one. You know, it finds out they're digging up the bones to use in the brew, and then later on they're even extracting tears to put in the brew. And then when Abe, you know, does the trial, finds the keeper, mystic shit happens. Abe, you know, gets electrified once again and gets the scar on his chest. And in Exodus, he got the scar in the, on his chest from the three weirdos so that he could... Uh, have the power of healing for the Soulstorm Brew sick Maduckans who were addicted to it. But in this one, after you leave the Keeper, 
You can then use the power of Strico, but you got the power of Strico in the first one from doing the Paramonia and Scrabiana. Scrab, Scrab, I don't know. Paramonia, Scrab, <laughs> Scrabiana. I'm probably saying that wrong. Trials. She used the. So, because Abe has an antidote for the Soulstorm Stick Madokans, because, you know, they're Soulstorm Stick sick in this one too Abe made an antidote Abe made an antidote from just some random shit in a cave and actually on the subreddit there was a really funny screenshot of a comment a reddit post read made regarding this specifically but no they just act sick and tired so what did Abe do he somehow manages to make an antidote from shit he found in a cave he somehow manages to make an antidote from shit he found in a cave that's like making a vaccine for covid from random crap in your backyard which is true. So he's got scars on his chest now. Oh, during that sequence with the Keeper, when he's getting electrified, he's obviously receiving visions of the past, Madokan history, etc., etc. That's being kept secret through the ages. And he falls to the floor in a fetal position. He's crying and he's saying things like, why would they do this? Like, how could they? How could they? And the keeper's like, oh, I'm so sorry, Abe, that you have to find out this stuff. And then the keeper just like mm, chucks him outside and it's like, go on your merry way. And now Abe can use the power of Shaiko, even though he could do that before. But okay, thank you. Remember I said that. So anyway, the game progresses and then, you know, you get to Saltstorm Brewery. Yada, yada, yada. There's other cutscenes going on with the Gluckens, including Moloch and the Brewmaster. And is Aslik in it? I don't know. They looked so creepy in the originals. But these Gluckens, they don't look creepy. They just make me feel ill when I look at them. Their skin is translucent. They look really old. They look really gr gross. They look like slugs or snails. They look weird. They don't look... I don't think they look domineering or, or frightening or anything like that. They just look weird, jelly-like. Don't like it. Don't like the direction they went with the... They kind of remind me, that's it. They remind me of, um, what's her name? The Mike Wazowski woman. I'm watching you, Mike Wazowski. That one. The slug. Always watching. That slug lady. That's what the Bluckens look like. That's not scary. <laughs> she was more scary in Monsters, Inc. than these... whatever. You don't encounter any Gluckens yourself as Abe in the game. All these cutscenes happen outside of it and there's like a little mini slick uprising where they are the ones who shoot the brewmaster and I guess Aslik and I guess a replacement for General Drippick. Um, which I found that interesting that I did like that with the little slick uprising, quite like that. They decided to join Mullock's team and Mullock is running away to Heyman Islands or some sort of, I don't know, like tax haven place, I'd assume. I quite liked that. But the Gluckens themselves, they just didn't have any sort of like personality either. They had quite distinct personalities in Exodus. I quite liked them as villains, I mean. General Drippick, an idiot. That Boneworks one calling Abe a bastard on that McGarg on the March TV show. I liked that. I liked the slick that was the presenter on that in the originals. I always like to imagine that he escaped in time and he was fine. By the way, you know that bit in Boneworks where you can access a secret area and there's all that sand? I only found out the other day that's not sand, that's bone dust from the amount of bones they were grinding up for the... Gross, right? So with the canonical good ending, Abe reveals to the guy, guys, and this is the big reveal, that they all share the same mother. And that's it. That's the end of the game. The reveal that they have the same mother is not news at all if you've, I don't know, just taken a cursory glance at Oddworld outside of the games. You would know that the mother is called Sam and she's the Madokan queen and she's like, massive and kept in this place and like kind of lives luxury and sells her eggs or gives her eggs to the gluckens and is told by the gluckens that oh your eggs like don't worry your children will have good happy lives which they'll probably like they might change that but that's something you'd already know and they do sort of reference it at the end of abe's exodus with the perfect ending where you get a message from the three weirdos saying oh in the next game you'll even find out more about your mother abe like unless you've played all of them and never looked at any news reports, interviews, extra like lore, the odd world Wikipedia, 
ever, then maybe you wouldn't know that. Like, yeah, if you're a complete beginner to the Oddworld series, then you wouldn't know that and that might be interesting. But surely they're not making this game, this game which is a retelling of a you know popular PS1 game, surely they're not like your target audience. Like you want your audience to be as many people as possible, but surely your target audience shouldn't be just new players. It should be your existing audience and hopefully new players, right? <laughs> Plus, remember what I said about Abe saying, oh, how could they, how could they? That language used does not match the reveal at the end of, oh, we have the same mother and no more information is given. That kind of language used would imply like something way worse than, hey, we all have the same mum. Doesn't match up. Obviously, we'll find out more in the next game. But now it's annoying that I'm going to have to wait however many years for the next game to come out so it can answer the question posited in the middle of this game i realized recently what is missing from the new and tasty remake and this and when the soulstorm trailer was announced i saw people saying it's not atmospheric it's not gritty it's not creepy like the originals it's so bright it's it's like an amusement park new and tasty was you know like neon lights it was like an amusement park and i kind of just thought oh people are just doing that thing where they just complain about stuff for the sake of it okay whatever and then i did play new and tasty and i was like hmm i mean hmm. It, yeah it's missing something it's missing something from the original so downloaded a few emulators played the originals uh sometimes what i like to do actually to put on like in the background this is quite odd to admit I enjoy the long plays of Abe's Odyssey and Abe's Exodus, where there's no commentary at all, no annoying commentary, being like, oh my god, guys, can't believe it just died, <laughs> I'm gonna fart now. No annoying commentaries, like, no commentary, long plays, perfect playthroughs. I find them oddly relaxing. And I realised, oh yes, the atmosphere is just gone in these new ones. The first one was infinitely more creepy than new and tasty. I mean, in new and tasty, sure, the pre the premise is the same. It's a remake, but it lost something because I think the cutscenes try to be a bit more comical. Whereas when you actually play Abe's Odyssey, you really get a sense of how cruel the word is and how you're by yourself and how horrible it is. So it's just gritty and it's dark. Visually, it is darker, which helps add to the ambiance. Like the first time you leave Rupture Farms and you leave the stockyards and you're just walking and you know, it's blue, like dark maybe, night sky and everything's kind of shadows on the screen and you're sneaking past all these slicks so you can get to the ancient Madokan, like place where they live. That is so atmospheric. Watch a few playthroughs to see what I mean. There's just something about that that's really heavily missing from these ones. Oh yeah, and Soulstorm also does that thing where in the beginning movie, shall we say, the intro, they show Abe and his Madokan friends on the train and they're being chased after by Sligs and it says 12 hours before and then you start the game. But there's so much that happens during that time. I really, this is just a really, really personal gripe that, you know, feel free to argue with me if you want. I don't like it when games, movies or books put that kind of limited time constraint i'm really aware that the first abe's odyssey did this where he's like my whole life changed in just one day and they also in the first abe's odyssey they had the levels represented that when you're walking through stockyards it's nighttime you get to the madokan ancient like home and then you go to paramonia during the daytime and scrabiana is like when it's dusk and then when you walk back to rupture farms it's nighttime again they did that with the levels to represent the day going by. So I'm aware that this gripe of mine is in the first one, but I just don't like it. <laughs> it's such a, I know it's such a petty thing to pick on. When so much happens and it's like, this clearly didn't happen in 12 hours. What are you talking about? You'd be exhausted. You need to nap. You need to like eat. No way. Did that all happen in 12 hours no way i can suspend my disbelief this far but not that far and i don't like when books do it either it's like imagine watching lord of the rings and then J.R. tolkien coming back just to tell us oh yeah that all happened in a week by the way i don't like it because <laughs> personally i just find it unrealistic and it takes me out of it a little bit it's just it's minor annoyance i know in the grand scheme of things so anyway i think i've probably missed some things out i didn't write a list down but I really wanted to enjoy this game. 
And will I still support Lorne Lanning when he comes out with the next one? Of course. But unfortunately, I find this one quite disappointing. Not gritty. Gameplay is very repetitive. You can do the same action 20 times. And 15 times out of those 20 times, you'll probably die because Abe won't grab onto the monkey bars properly. And the plot, the, the graphics are really good. Sure, okay. But the plot was a little bit, a tiny bit of a miss for me. It left more questions than, than answers, which I don't find that rewarding for a game that we've been waiting for for several years. And I paid money for this game. So, <laughs> but that's fine, you know, keep my money. Just do a little bit better next time. Bring back Scrabs and Paramites. Where are the Scrabs and Paramites? It was fun to possess them in Exodus. The music, please, please do something about music. The music was so good in the first two. I think that's all I have time for for today. So if you enjoyed this video, do remember to like and subscribe. I make new videos whenever I feel like it. Follow me on Instagram. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.